Today, we're going to be talking about trees, just like the one that you see on the screen. We're going to be talking about that tree, we're going to be talking about the beautiful deciduous trees you see in the forest. We're going to talk about cherry blossoms, pine trees, palm trees, you name it. We're going to be talk- no. Okay, fine, fine. I'll be completely honest with you. No, we're not talking about those kind of trees. We are still talking about trees, I wasn't lying to you about that, but we're going to be talking about CS trees. Sorry about that, I know you guys are like really attached to trees, but we really gotta move on to the more important CS trees, you know what I'm saying? Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we're gonna be talking about trees, specifically minimum spanning trees, which are actually a super important type of tree in CS. So basically what a minimum spanning tree is, is basically what the name says. It's basically the smallest tree that spans the entirety of a graph. So I know that probably doesn't make any sense right now, so we're gonna do an example! Alrighty, so here's our graph, right? So basically what we want to do is we want to find the smallest tree that has all the nodes in the graph. So basically what a tree is, is a graph without a cycle. So right now this graph has cycles, right? So we want to find a graph within this graph that doesn't have any cycles that covers everything. So let me give you the actual answer to this question. Well, blamo, you see that red graph that we have over here? See how it has no cycles? Well, that is a minimum spanning tree. That's because it's the smallest possible tree that we could put on this graph such that it touches all the nodes. See, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 all on the same tree. It's crazy. So basically, the size of the tree is just defined as the sum of all its edges. So we have a 3 over here, we have a 1, we have a 2, we have a 4. And that's just equal to 10. So basically, the size of this tree is 10, and you could try a bunch of other ways, but you're never going to get it less than 10. Now, why the heck would this be useful for anybody? Like, literally... Who in the world would want to find a random cycleless tree on a graph? Well, the answer is that let's say that Farmer John has pastures, right? And we want to find the cheapest way to connect all of them where like a road costs as much as its length is. So basically, we want to have the smallest cost, right? So then we had to have the least amount of road to make, hence the minimum spanning tree. If we built the minimum spanning tree, everything's connected, right? But we also use the smallest amount of roads. So that's why the minimum spanning tree is useful. But, how do we actually get it? That, my friends, is a question. And no, we're not gonna plant a tree on a random one and grow it or something to make a minimum spanning tree. That's not how it works, okay? These aren't biological trees. I thought I already made that clear. Anyway, biological trees would be fun to talk about, but that's for another video. Today we're talking about CS trees, minimum spanning trees. And the way we do it is actually very similar to Dijkstra's. You know that service path algorithm we talked about a while ago? Well, today we're talking about Prim's algorithm, which is a very similar way to Dijkstra's, except it's for minimum spanning trees. So let's clean this boy up and try to get our minimum spanning tree. So basically what Prim's does is it starts at zero. So we start at zero and we're like, now how do we get to our minimum spanning tree? So basically what we first do, is we look at the neighbors of zero. We add them to our list, and then we looked at all of zero's neighbors, so that we just cross out zero. And then we look at the two vertices that we have as options now. The two vertices that I circled are now potential candidates for the next vertice that we add to our minimum spanning tree. So should we add one or should we add two? So basically the way that Prim decided to decide between the two is to take the one that's closer to our filled in thing. So is one closer? No. Two is closer actually. So we basically add this edge to our minimum spanning tree, and we go to two. Now, when we get to two, we add both of its neighbors. So we still have one, and then we also add three, so we circle that. Now we're done with two, so we cross that out. And now what we gotta do is we gotta decide between one and three. So now we have to decide which one is closer to our shaded in region. So that's the zero and the two. So one is the distance one from two, three is the distance two from two, and we don't really care about the seven because that's just too big for anything. So it's between one and three, and Clearly one is closer because one is less than two. So then we go to one and then we also add this edge. All right, so now what we do is we look at one's neighbor. So we already looked at three. We already know that it's a distance two, so this doesn't change anything. And then we look at four and we see that it's a distance six. So we add that over here. And then now we're done with one's neighbor, so we just cross that out. So now we decide between three and four. So which one's closer to zero, one, or two? Well, three is obviously closer because four is the minimum distance is six. So 6 is like, kind of like way too big, so we don't want to choose 4, so instead we go to 3. So basically we want to add the least edge to 3, but both of them are the same, so it doesn't really matter. For the sake of sticking with our example, we'll just take this edge. And now we look at 3. So it's only neighbor is 4, and that doesn't change anything, so we basically just 
cross out three. And now we know we had to get to four. The shortest edge to four is just this edge over here. So we add that and we'll blend. We found our minimum spanning tree. So basically Prim's strategy is to add the closest vertex to what we already have. So what we already have is basically just a shaded region. Now why does this work? Why does this make any sense whatsoever? So basically every time we add a uh, edge to a spanning tree, it connects two of the vertexes, right? So basically every time you connect a new vertex into your tree, you're basically increasing the number of nodes that are in your tree by one. But in the end, we want to end up with five nodes, right? So that basically means we had to add an edge five times. That also means we want to take the five smallest edges. So like, why would you take a seven when you could take a three, right? You want to take the smallest edge first. Similarly, we always want to just go for the smallest edge because every time we add an edge, we're getting closer to our goal. So there's no reason to not add the shortest edge. Adding a longer edge would achieve the same thing, but add so much more to our expanding tree's length. So it just doesn't make sense to add a longer edge. So that's why Prim thought of this. Alrighty, you might notice from this code that this is exactly the same thing as our Dijkstra code. The only thing that I've changed is over here, when we push to our queue. Instead of pushing the distance from the node to the starting vertex, we do the distance from the node to the current tree. So basically what we're trying to find is the length of the minimum spanning tree. And basically how I do that is I start with zero. And then every time we add an edge to our tree, I add in its length over here. So let's try running it on our graph which I have its representation over here in musical format. So let's just put it in our thing. And we'll blame it. We get 10 just as we expected. Just in case you didn't watch the Dijkstra video, let me explain how this code works. So basically we have the number of vertices n, we have the number of edges m, we have our adjacency list representation of our graph, and then we have a priority queue. So basically the priority queue stores the candidate for the next vertex that we're gonna look at. And it stores it along with its distance to our graph. So basically this priority queue is gonna spit out the closest vertex to our graph every time. And then the distance, this array over here just represents whether or not we added it to our minimum spanning tree yet. So we first read in all our stuff over here. We set all our things to not visit it because we haven't added anything. Ah, almost dropped my paper. So basically this for loop just sets all our distances to negative one so that we can know that we haven't visited anything or added anything to our minimum spanning tree yet. Then we add 0, 0 because 0 is obviously 0 away from the current spanning tree. We start with our minimum spanning tree length of 0. And then while our priority queue is not empty, we look at the first one. If we've already looked at it, then we just skip it over. But if we haven't, then we say, hey, we're adding this to our minimum spanning tree. So let's set its distance to something. Then we add the length of the edge to our MST length. So for example, if we're adding an edge of length 3, it would add 3 to our MST length. And then we look through all its neighbors. If we haven't already added them to our MST, we basically just add them to our priority queue with the distance they are from the graph. And then this just repeats until we've looked at every single vertex, added every single vertex to our minimum span tree, and then we get to the end. And then we just see how the length of our minimum span tree is just 10. Very cool. All right, that's basically all you guys gotta know for Prim's algorithm. It's not the only way to do minimum span trees, but it's one of the most useful ones. In a typical user code problem, you're probably gonna use Prim's to find a minimum span tree, and Honestly, it's a pretty useful algorithm. I gave you the example of having the shortest rows to connect all the pastures in Farmer John's thing. There are other examples, but they're a little bit more obscure. So generally, that's the main one. For atypical graphs, there's another algorithm called Cruskull, which we'll cover next time. But Prims is generally what you're going to be using. And that's it! You've made it through a day of trees. I know one of your favorite type of trees. I know you love those palm trees that you go to at the beach, but unfortunately, we gotta talk about- No, fortunately. Fortunately, okay, you don't say anything else, okay? Fortunately. Alrighty, thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. If you guys want more of these, go crash course, let me know down in the comments. Other than that, thank you guys again for watching so much, and see you guys next time.